Hey everybody, thank you for uh, joining us again as we uh, continue to walk through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Uh, last week we talked about question four, which is what is God? And the answer to that is God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchangeable. In his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. Uh, last week we talked about there are many spirits. Um, question five goes in and asks us, are there more gods than one? And the answer to that is, there is but one only, the living and true God. Uh, there is but one only. So we see this in several places. I'll read through some scripture this morning. Um, first one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. We read, starting in the second part of verse 4, it says, There is no God but one, for although there may be so-called gods in heaven, and on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, the one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. There is but one God, the Father, not just God, it's a capital G God, um, we see in 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, we find Solomon praying in verse 60. He says that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no other. And also in uh, another one we'll see in Isaiah 44, verse 6 says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last besides me. There is no God. So the scripture tells us there is only one God, capital G God. Um, it also says the living and true God. Uh, we find in, in Jeremiah, in chapter 10, the first part of chapter 10, it says um, in verse 10, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting God. Now, the context, if you read around some of the other verses around this verse and the verse we read in 1 Corinthians, we're really on the subjects of idolatry. Um, when I think about that, I think of another passage uh, that may be familiar to some of you. It says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. We cannot serve two masters. We must choose God, for he is the only living and true God. Um, as I was preparing this, honestly, I felt this was fairly short. Um, but I feel that that's really because Scripture is very clear on this. Uh, it really allows no other view. Um, but I would encourage you, as you go through this week, um, to read back through these passages um, especially the one with 1 Corinthians when we're talking about capital G God or, and then gods or capital L Lord and Lords. Um, look, at, look at those passages. Read, look at them in context. Um, read not just the verses here, but read around them. I mentioned a minute ago there were several. Uh, there's a, two passages I mentioned that were on the subject of idolatry. Um, Thinking about that, uh, I mentioned the the verse where it says no one can serve two masters. I un, I did not give you that on purpose. I didn't give you where that's coming from on purpose. I want you to look. I'll tell you, uh, it's in the Sermon on the Mount, and hopefully several of you that have, were with us on with Carpe on Sunday nights will recall that recall that when I said it. Um, and if not, that's okay. But I encourage you read through not just to find this verse, but read all the way through the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, there's a lot of good things in there, a lot of things that you can apply to your life today. Um, I also encourage you, uh, looking at the First Kings um, verse that I read, that was, that was one verse in a prayer that Solomon was praying, and uh, I encourage you to go back through, read, read all of Solomon, uh, that entire prayer. Um, think about how it applies to you, and use it to pray to what we see here is the 
one only, the living and true God. Uh, we learned uh, part of motivation maybe in, in doing this is we learned in question two that, or the answer to question two was um, the, the scriptures is the rule that God gave us to direct us how we may glorify and enjoy him. So what better way for God to direct us than by reading his word?